A study conducted by the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development shows that about 60 out of every 100 children are repeatedly violated sexually, physically and emotionally after their first experience. One of the reasons for the frequency of this abuse, which is highlighted in the report, is that there have not been preventive measures and adequate responses against the perpetrators. According to Dina Nawire, the Program Learning Advisor at TPO Uganda, government service delivery systems need to be strengthened to more effectively prevent and respond to violence against children. Some of the experiences we've picked up in Lira is most of the religious leaders and uh, um, cultural leaders in the communities provide a message of forgiveness and reconciliation. So if someone comes and says, oh, I have been defiled, the first thing to say is you have to forgive. But these are criminal cases. So empowering them to actually know that this is criminal and where do you go? How do you preserve um, evidence? Mondo Chateka, the Commissioner for Children's Affairs in the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, says communities have developed tendencies of handling cases of violence against children where justice is not delivered adequately. There have been some kind of soft gloves. Somebody has committed such a grave offense, like sexual abuse of a child. That deserves the toughest punishment. But then, oftentimes, people have sorted some of these issues outside court. We are moving out to all the LCs, now they, are, they have been elected, to sensitize them that cases of such magnitude cannot be handled by an LC court. And the LC court should not keep quiet about such cases of a grave, grave, uh, grave magnitude. Human rights lawyer Ophelia Kemjisha believes that the laws of the land are stringent enough. It's only a matter of enforcement. If, so if the police is deliberate about, well, holding people to account, investigating the cases, taking them to court, and if the courts are deliberate about passing sentences and doing whatever needs to be done, then the problem would be solved. Chateka calls for vigilance in the neighborhoods because these criminal acts are prevalent where the authorities cannot respond in a timely manner. We are also trying to encourage people to become parents of all the children in the community. We want to go back to the old adage where it takes a village to bring up a child. Don't say, Tevin Kwatako. Somebody is beating a child, the child is crying, crying, and nobody is coming to rescue. The report recommends an adoption of some global practices that have been proved to work in rehabilitation and supporting the affected children. We are working with the Ministry of Gender and World Vision, um, supported by the World Health Organization, to pilot what is called the Inspire Strategies in Michiana District. Um, and we're also doing this in Lira. So um, Inspire has uh, its seven strategies. One is implementation and enforcement of laws. The other is uh, norms and values change. Um, we have uh, safe environments. We have uh, parenting and caregiver support. We have income and economic strengthening. We have uh, response and then we have um, education. So each one of those strategies has been proven globally to provide address to, to violence against children. The fight to end violence against children should also include the informal sector because it plays an important role in shaping the social norms in the country. Walter Mwesije, NTV.